Welcome to the Kosin Kosi podcast, a brand that stands for all things owning your power. In other words, we have conversations with individuals from different walks of life, understanding that how did you get to the point of owning your true power and what did you do to get to that point of owning that power? Welcome to another episode of the Kosingosi podcast, a brand that stands for all things owning your power. On this podcast, we open up conversations with different individuals from different walks of life to try and understand how did you get to the point of realizing your true power and what did you do to get to that point of owning that power? We believe that confidence is something that comes from within you. And we also believe that clothing and fashion statements are a big part of that process. And that's why we warn our clients that whenever draped in the Kosingose design, you will be getting compliments and stares. I am your host, Sohorani Liseidani, and joining me in studio today is a model, an actress, a TV and radio presenter. Mutsua lady, Khotato El Nasidumo. <laughs> <laughs> engine number, engine number. Oh my word! Yes, that E one. Yeah, you don't like the the L one. Why do you have it there? Elna, do I look like an Elna? <laughs> someone briefed me that you were an Elna. I know, I know. Yes, that yes, there is that someone that told me <laughs> her name, her full is. name is Elna. Yeah. That's my yes. Name. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so me. happy to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm so proud of your work. You've been in the industry for nine years now. That's mm-hmm. almost a decade. Yeah, You've yeah. achieved so much in in that time, and I think you should should be really proud of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. you so thank well. you so much. So you were born and bred in Kahiso. Yeah. Tell me what that was like for you. Sure. So. Growing up in Kahiso, I don't really have like a lot of memories that I remember because when I was eight, my mom got into a car accident. Um, So now her legs were not working. Her hands were also not working. She could only speak. So my mind did something kind of erased my childhood, like a big chunk of my childhood. So my my memories of my childhood are very blurry because Mm. of the traumatic experience that I went through with the accident that my mom got into. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of your mom, I'm aware that she is late. Yeah. She left me. How dare she? Oh, no. How dare? That woman, every day I'm like, how? Why? Dare? She left me. At what age were you when you lost her after the accident? Just take me through what happened after the accident. So you know what? I'm realizing now that it was the second time I was losing my mom. It's just that the second time was the final time. Yeah. I lost my mom the first time after the accident because I was with my mom everywhere. Everywhere. Like my mom didn't have friends, so Mm. she would take me everywhere. After the accident, obviously, I couldn't see her. She was away for rehabilitation, and then I had to stay with my grandmother, and my aunt raised me. So that was the first time I lost my mom. Mm. Something as basic as a hug. I've never received a hug from my mom. I was robbed of that. Yeah. You know, I've never gone to the mall with my mom. I've never done that daughter mother thing that daughters and mothers do. I was robbed of that, number one, right? And then she came back from rehabilitation when I was 16. So imagine those years, age 16, she was away because physio, she also needed therapy because imagine going from being fully able to not being able to do anything. So she had to go away for a very long time. She came back home around 16 and then I moved back because then I was living with my aunt. Mm -hmm. Remember, she raised me and then I moved back. And then I I just feel like just as we were starting to vibe and getting to know each other, she died. And I was robbed of that again. So when she came back, could she do her normal activities no. or she still just couldn't she, do My much? mom was bedridden for 19 years. For 19 she, years? Yeah, if she wasn't on the wheelchair, she was on the bed. She could only speak. She couldn't do anything else. 
Oh my God. Yeah. What was that like for you? Very traumatic. Very traumatic. And very, what did you very do? Very lonely. Nothing. That's the problem. Nothing was done to assist me. I was a child. Yeah. I'm not throwing shade to anyone. I understand that it was traumatic to everyone, to her brothers, to my aunt. Mm. But I feel like as adults, they could have done more yeah. to help me. I was eight. And nobody thought, let's take Mozart to therapy. Yeah. Let's maybe every weekend we'll alternate. Let's take her out so that she's not so lonely or mm. she's not just so miserable because my mom was my world. And I understand that maybe at that time they were also going through it, but yeah. I feel like they could have done more. Yeah. I was a baby man. So uh, your life just consisted of you going to school and coming back, yeah. nothing much. Yeah, going to school, uh, keeping to myself, mm. um, being bullied. Uh, lack of self-esteem. So it was a lot. It was a lot of things growing up that were just piling and piling and piling on me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think I would become anything because who was there to cheer me on? Yeah. Everybody's life just went on except mine. Sure. Yeah. So you've been in the industry now for nine years. Mm -hmm. Take me through your career and how you started off, how you got your breakthroughs, you know. So mama ka khala arata dilo. Remember when generations back in the day when James was still go back of the moon? Yes. So my mom was an extra there. Go the bar. Oh, so nice. she used to doing to auditions when I was really young, like mm. your Christmas ads. I used to go to those ads, but sadly after the accident, mm. then nobody started to take me to auditions. Mm. So it just stopped. So stop. Eight years, my mom got to accident. Audition stopped. I went on in life with that burden. And then after matric, I didn't know what to do. I wasn't interested in anything. But I was like, I'm going to do radio. Mm. Then, so that sparked my interest. I'm like, you know what? Because I didn't think I'd become an actress. Mm. I didn't think I would attain it because how? Yeah. I, I went for something closer, which was radio. Mm. I went to radio after matric. I enjoyed it. I loved it. I was like, okay, this is it. Um, after graduation, I did the SABC internship. I got hired at Metro FM as an intern. Metro. From nothing to Metro. Yo. God. That was a big break. Babe. From really, it was really zero. Mm. From just me existing to finally living. So it was that. And then I got hired at Metro FM. And then after Metro FM, they hired me at Radio 2000 as a content producer. Mm. And then that year, there was a workshop. Um, there was a then casting director from Generations. And kind of who's that lady? I forgot her name, but she's also an actress. Yeah. So I was like, I need to attend this workshop. Sometimes I was like, you need to attend this workshop. And then I made sure that I attended the workshop. The actress was there and the casting director from Generations were there. Mm -hmm. And then I just did the workshop. A year later, this casting director calls me. So a year later... I'm on Radio 2000. Mm. I'm working as a content producer. I've made peace with my fate that I'm not going to act. Mm. I'm going to do radio. I'm happy. I'm at peace. I was really content with being a content producer. Yeah. I get a call from this casting director. So I remember you from this workshop a year ago. I've been holding auditions. Please come through. Great wild, right? <laughs> A year ago? A year ago? You remember me from a year ago? You must have made such a, a big impression. Girl. Have you seen me on the <laughs> I have. I have. I have. Trust me, I have. I believe so, I'll do the same. You're right. Yeah. yeah, but the fact that she remembered me kind of showed me how powerful my gift was. Yeah. And then I went for the audition. I uh, got hired the following day. Wow. I auditioned on Thursday. I got hired on Friday. Monday, I was starting to shoot. And Monday was my birthday. Amazing. God really came through for you, hey? Yeah. That after Monday all was of my, that. Yeah, yeah, after all of that, mon that Monday was my birthday. And I was starting in the industry. And I started on Generations The Legacy. Yeah. As my first gig ever. Amazing work. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that you've experienced mm. in the industry? I mean, for someone like you who've been in it for so long, yeah. I'm sure you've gone through a lot of hurdles. What are some of the challenges that you've gone through? I mean, because remember, I was still struggling with low self-esteem, with being naive, with being like a people pleaser because mm. I didn't have any boundaries. Mm. Because I, I've always like seeked love and validation because I grew up not getting them. Yeah. So I think I was... I walked into the industry with that. I was naive. I was vulnerable. I had low self-esteem and 
you can only imagine that's a disaster. Because mm. you need to have a backbone to get into this industry. Yeah. You need to be able to say, this is what I stand for. This will not do. Yeah. And your no should be no. Yeah. yeah. But now sitting here and realizing that those are the things that you needed, how did you get to the point of now being comfortable in your skin? Even if it's still your struggle now. Yeah. How did you deal with the grief? How did you, what did you do to cope? I had to go through it. The only way out is through it. The only way through anything, mm. to make it out of anything, mm. you have to go through it. Mm. So yes, it was painful. I've always felt like I have been overlooked and undervalued and mm. I'm, I'm such a phenomenal actress, but yes, I've always are. felt like I've been overlooked. Um, but I've gotten to realize that sometimes it's not personal. It's not about you. Mm. You know, this is a big machine mm. and it's not personal. Mm. It's just that it's that's just the nature moving. of the game. Yeah. So I had to also stop taking things personally because I took everything personally. Like if I didn't get an audition, then there's something wrong with me. What did I do wrong? I would cry for a week because then this, what is wrong with me? Why couldn't I get that role? You know, mm. it, it had to come to an end. When I understood my power, when I understood my gift, mm. you know, I question a lot of things, Lebo, mm. but not my talent. Not your talent. Never no, your talent. That one you will not. You can shake me on many things. Yeah. Not my talent. I like that because that's the one thing that you really that I stand on. Yeah. That you stand on. Yeah. Yes. And I like that for you. Yeah. But I'm still really stuck on the loss of your mom and the trauma that you yeah. had to go through. You didn't do anything in particular, like maybe therapy. I didn't go to therapy for You years. just had to deal with it on yeah. your own. Yeah. That's phenomenal. It's painful. Because then you don't know how to get into relationships, any kind of relationship, friendships, relationships. You don't know because you have never received love. You don't know what love is. Mm. Um, and you always feel like everyone is going to leave you. Sometimes you self-sabotage. When people want to love you, they can't love you because you don't let them in. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you, you find yourself experiencing in your friendships yeah. and your relationships in general? Yeah. They didn't work out. And honestly, it's going to sound bad, but half of the time I didn't care. You know why? Because nobody cared about me. Remember, I was eight. Mm. So I got molded into nobody cares about me, so why should I care about you? Sure. So I would lose like relationships and friendships and I wouldn't be touched. Like it's whatever. I wouldn't be bothered. So what next? Sure. That was my yeah, it was like, so what next? And then, did I die? Are you my oxygen? But that's not the way to live. That's not the way to live. No, that's not the way. You so need I've lived, other people. So you can imagine I've lived like that for years. Next time, Lingi babes. Even when I needed to. No man is an island. No man is an island. Mm. You need other people. Even as when much I as you think, to. yeah. Even when I needed to fix certain things, I wouldn't fix them. I'd be like, oh, that's how you feel? Bye. Oh, no. There's the door. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so glad that you're self-aware now. That's what I can give you. You're aware that that's what you used to do. Yeah. At least then, are you working to... I am working on yeah. it. So after losing my mom in 2019, that was the shift. Because then I was alone. Mm. So you only left, you lost your mom in 2019? Yeah. That's like yesterday. Yeah. No. I lost her in 2019. I'm so sorry. It's been a long journey. It's been tough for you. Yeah, and also being a child, having to see your mom in that condition is not easy. Having to see your mom just on the chair or on the bed every day and she was not willing to like go out. And I understand because people are so annoying. Yeah. People be like, oh, what happened? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. They would always come to her, you know? Because mm. even when we do go out, she can't feed herself. So obviously somebody would have to feed her. So she didn't want that kind of attention. My mom only le ever left the house to go to the hospital for checkups for 19 years. That's a long time. That is a long time. Because I think that's what saddens me the most. The, mo the fact that it's been dragged it was dragged, dragged for that long. Yeah. You know, it's one thing for someone to get into an accident and be a sudden loss. Yeah. But then it's another if you watch them for that suffer. long suffer. Yeah. And it's not like it was just a clean play. No, she suffered for 19 years. Because what happens when you sit on a chair for too long on a bed? Bed sores. Bed sores. But and what else can she do? That's it. You turn on a bed sores, right? Bed sores. You sit bed sores. 
have you ever found yourself in like a would you consider yourself as someone who was depressed at one point absolutely in time? yeah absolutely for years for years yeah i didn't know what it was mm. but yeah I was depressed for years. Yeah, because we're only getting a lot of, you know, information, information right? about depression yeah, now. And yeah. we're starting to realize, oh, that, I think I was depressed. Yeah. yeah, I was depressed for years. That's why I didn't care about life itself for years. I was on autopilot for years. <laughs> it's sad, but it was whatever. Even in school, it's like, hey, get past, I got feel ah, bro. It's whatever. It's whatever. Where do you find yourself right now looking at everything that you have gone through from a mental state? How, where do you see yourself right now? Uh, I know it's very painful, but it, it, God, when they say God works in mysterious ways, sometimes, it's like, uh, but in me losing my mom, that was the shift that I needed. I needed to move because I was stuck in the same place for years. Mm. After losing my mom, plus, so I lost my mom December 2019, and then 2020, March is COVID, remember? Mm. So I was stuck in that apartment by myself. I had to face myself and face my demons, for lack of a better word. Mm. And that's when I sat down with myself for the first time in years. And when I looked back, I was like, I can't believe I survived all of that. All of that. And that's when I started being proud of myself. Mm. And started giving yourself the credit that you deserve. It's just sad that my mom had to be sacrificed for me to kind of wake up. Sure. So had it not been her passing, you would have I'd just still been, been... I would have still been that girl. I'm not going to lie to you. Who just didn't care. Didn't like care. it's whatever. It's whatever. Or like, it's um, I guess I it, yeah. So it, it just sucks that in the greater scheme of things, God had to sacrifice my mom for me to finally get the life that I deserve yeah. and to fulfill the purpose that God brought me here for because, ish, man, it was tough seeing my mom like that. Mm. I couldn't even fully enjoy my life. I couldn't even travel the way I wanted to travel because I was like, I don't want to leave my mom. Mom behind. I didn't. Yeah. How, how can I, I didn't leave so South fun. Africa because I was like, mm. I'm not going to leave my mom. Yeah. How can I have fun when my mom is It was like that. And, yeah. and she wanted me to do that. But I was like, I can't. It wasn't easy for me to like leave her like that. Because mm. also, over and above everything, I felt sorry for her. Yeah. That she was robbed of so many things. Yeah. And she died. Haven't had done anything. Sure. So I was very sad for my mom. She didn't deserve to go through that. She didn't. Absolutely not. So it's a, it's a great sacrifice because now I'm in my power and nothing is ever going to take me down. Nothing. Never. No After business. going through that, I think the only way is upwards from here. Yeah. The only way is literally upwards because yeah. in my opinion, I think that's just the trenches. Yeah. Just to put you at ease, what I'm establishing is that you are really working on yourself and yeah. on your healing journey. And I'm really proud of you for that. And I think you should be proud of yourself. Thank you. Now, speaking of your career, what yeah. roles have you played? What TV shows have you played in? <laughs> and what's the plan from here? Um, so I've been on a couple of shows. Um, I started out in Generations The Legacy mm -hmm. as a Sexy lingerie yeah. model. We got into trouble for that. <laughs> this is CSA and stuff. So that was interesting. And then from there, I moved to The Queen. No, I moved to Greed and Desire after mm. Generations of Legacy. I moved to Greed and Desire. From there, then I moved to The Queen. I was there for a long time. Yeah. I think close to three years. You were. On The Queen. And then COVID happened, right? We had to pause. And then my comeback was The Wife. Mm. Mm, it's a devilish <laughs> sister. I love that character. It was beautiful. She is my favorite. Yeah, I enjoyed it's it. It's scary that Teddy Moseto is my favorite character. That is scary because what if there's that person deep inside of you? Because that's what I always think when I look at actors. I'm like, is this just... So we do. I mean, we do borrow a bit. Yeah. Not completely, but you borrow something yeah. from you to get into character. Terimo Sezo challenged me. You know why? Because mm. she was a mixture of everything. She was sweet. She was nice. She was vulnerable. She was evil, mm. vindictive, uh, revengeful, but so compassionate. Yeah. And when I watched it, I was like, that's me? 
I was in awe yeah. of my craft yeah. for the first time. I was like, wow. That's so Tedimo says it will go down in history as my favorite character. I feel like I am owed an award for that. <laughs> but I hope someone is listening. It's okay. It's whatever. Get the pay on award. It's whatever. Yeah, so those are the, the, the things I've done. And I did also Netflix. Hey, international. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a love story. That was actually my last gig. Yeah. Yeah, last Having year. been in the industry for so long, what do you think could be done better? <laughs> um, okay. Um, so this is not me being arrogant mm. in any shape or form. I've been acting for nine years. Mm. So that means I'm an established actress. actress. Yeah. What sometimes I fail to understand is why am I still auditioning? I feel like you already know. You've seen the characters I've played. You've seen my range. Mm. Um, you should be able to be like, hey, well, I'm working on something. Are you interested? And then I'll take a look at the script and say, oh, this is not something I'm willing to do. Mm. Um, also, the auditioning process tends to be so emotional because then we have to sit in the same room with our competition. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel like they can set like set different time slots. Yeah. Like if I'm going to see Leo at 11, we can see more at 12. Yeah. I don't like seeing my competition. Yeah. Like why must we sit in the same room waiting to audition? I yeah. feel like they can change that. Um, the bill, obviously, the bill needs to be signed because uh, we get deducted like anybody else. SARS deducts, but we're not covered. We don't, yeah. you know, we don't get things that normal people get, but we still get deducted like normal people. Mm. So the bill really needs to be signed so we can also benefit. Yeah. Me getting royalties would be amazing. Yeah. Greed and Desire still playing. The last time I shot that was 2016. I'm not getting a cent and still playing to date. Sure. And in different countries. And I'm not getting anything for it. Oh, that's, that's really sad, actually. It's sad. Yeah. We're not covered in any shape or form. I could work for six months and I'll get paid for six months and I'll, then I'll be unemployed for the rest of like two years. What am I going to survive on? And that show is still And that airing. show is still airing. Sure. No, someone needs to do better. Yeah, Some and, and sometimes, you know, when fans are like, oh, we sing most already here, then everywhere, they don't understand that. I probably shot that six months ago. You're only watching it now. And then I'm busy with something else. Mm that you're going to see in the next six months. Yeah. And you're thinking I'm everywhere, where else my paycheck is not... It's like not that. everywhere. No. Like I shot that a while ago. So <laughs> it would be nicer if, if we could be protected. Be. Yeah. Yeah, because we also have families and we have bills to pay. So it would really be nice if we could also just be protected. I hope this is going to reach the right people. I really hope the, the president right really needs to sign the bill. Yeah. Yeah. If you were a plate of food and you were to serve yourself to a large crowd of people, what would you have on that plate and why? <laughs> oh, is this a shock? A plate of food? Yeah. I am salty and sweet. Get your plate in when? I'm a mixture. Mm. I'm not one thing. What would I serve? Uh, mm, I'd, mm, <laughs> I would serve... I don't know. Okay, something salt and sweet. Something yeah. salty. If you, can, if you can make something salt yeah, so and sweet. Yeah, something salty and sweet. Yeah. That's good enough. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that's okay. That's even better. That's even better. Oh, I was about to ask you and if you were to be a drink. So you love gin. Gin and what? Tonic? Gin and tonic. Oh, nice. That's but a I'm nice... also a shot of tequila. Oh, yeah. Like, let's get to the point. Because that's what tequila does. <laughs> let's get to the point. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love so two that. things. I'm like, let's take it easy with a double gin and tonic. Mm. But also, I'm a tequila. Let's get to, to the, the point. point. Let's yes. do this. <laughs> yeah. So with this new interest of life that you have, yeah. I mean, from caterpillar to now a beautiful butterfly, <laughs> what are your new interests in life? What are the things that you're looking forward to? What you want to do? Actually living, because yeah. I haven't been living life for so long. So yeah. living, I love traveling. Mm, I, I want to get into that. Yes. 
I, I, I've heard that you love it. <laughs> Yo. yeah. So I want to get into traveling. I actually also want to get into a nice relationship. Oh, nice. Where I'm shown off. For when it coupling soft and love. Never, soft love. Soft love is where it's at. Yeah. Please don't settle for anything outside of soft Baby, love. No. So yeah. Uh, traveling. Mm -hmm. Boys, <laughs> because they're delicious. The boys are delicious. <laughs> but yeah, just continue living and taking each day as it comes yeah. and just being happy yeah. that I'm here, that I'm, I'm still given the opportunity to live. What are some of the travel destinations that you're looking forward to? I want to do Prague. Nice. I want to do Singapore. Oh, yes. I want to do Italy or V. I've never been. London would also be nice. I want to go to Disney. Nice. I'm still a child at heart. I need to go to Disneyland. Let me tell you, I was in Disneyland Paris. Of course. And I did that for my I'm my hating. inner child. Listen, I healed. I'm hating. Yeah. But then I'm going to go to Hill. I healed when I was in <laughs> Disneyland. I promise you, please do it. Yeah, I really want to Whether the to one in, in the States or the one in Paris, just do it for your but inner child. I also want to do Universal Studios. Yes. I mean, I'm an actress. So I really just want to see like the Universal studios. studios in Singapore. Is it the one in, in Singapore? In Florida. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I want to do the one in Florida. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for myself. I'm it's excited been, for it's you. It's been such a long journey for me that I'm really excited about what's next because it's only up, up. Yeah. We're not going back down. So I'm a solo traveler and I would like to suggest that for you. Please, please, just just hear me out. Oh, no, baby. I got trust issue. No, no, no. Do it for yourself. Oh, honey. I promise you, just just trust me. Even if you do, like you start off a, a, a small trip to like Devon on your own. Yeah, I was going to say, can I start like yeah. locally? Start, start locally, like a small trip to Devon yes. and do it by yourself. Oh I promise word. you, it's the most liberating thing you're, you're ever going to experience. Really? I promise you. Okay. Please I'm just hear me out. on my bucket list. Please, just at least one trip alone and then come back and tell me. Oh, I'm a ball of fun. Yes, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Why am I worried? That's what I'm saying. Yo, like you're going to have the best time of your life. I'm and gonna you're going to see a fresh perspective about your character that you True. never really knew. Especially because you spend so much time not really living. Yeah. You will get to see your patung. I am really all that. Okay, get like a cup start. Yes. Devin. <laughs> Sorry, Devonite. <laughs> I promise you, you're going to have so much fun. I will, ne? I'm so excited for you. Thank and outside you. of being an actress and doing all of these things, are there any other career interests that you there have? Is, there is something God has called me into Which that is? I've been running away from. So I'm going to do that. You'll what see very that? soon. You'll call me back. I'll be sitting on this chair telling you about Batung, it. Batung, are you really going to hang me Baby, like that? Baby, cliffhanger. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Oh, Ms. Aledi, it was lovely having you on the podcast today. Yeah. I wish you all the healing and all the success because you, you deserve so it. I'm a phoenix. No yeah. matter how many times I burn to ashes, I will rise. You'll rise again. Yeah. Thank you. And that's it from today's episode. Thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you on the next epi episode. Thank you. Bye.